Hello, hello, hello. We're looking at the study guide for stoichiometry. And um, this is like the uh, little mini test before our next full stoichiometry test. Um, year is 2017. All right, everyone, let's take a look at the practice problem number one. It says, if I burn methane gas, which is CH4, and produce, uh, oh, burn, oh, so it doesn't even tell us like a chemical reaction. Well, you know that you can't do anything without a balanced chemical reaction, right? So it says it's burning. What type of reaction is that? Com uh, don't say decomposition, careful. That's combustion. All right, so what do we always add in order for something to burn? Oxygen, good job, O2. All right, what are the products, the typical products of those combustion reactions? CO2 and H2O, bravo. All right, if you don't know that, it's something to study, okay? The basic characteristics of the five types of chemical reactions, so know the characteristics of each. All right, balancing these uh, combustion reactions can give you a little grief, but uh, let's see if we can figure this out. What I like to do is separate the reactants from the products. All right, count how much carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen you got on both sides. This is one, this is four, this is two. This guy's one, two, and three. All right, um, the element that is the hardest to balance, you'll see it being in the reaction, you'll see it the most often. So carbon I only see one, two times. Hydrogen I only see one, two times. But oxygen I see one, two, three. Therefore oxygen is probably the hardest element to balance. Let's balance that guy last. All right, so carbon is one and one, we're set. Hydrogen is four and two. All right, so let's get four hydrogens on the right side. Here's your hydrogen. How do I get four? Yeah, add a coefficient. We're going to get two on that. So that'll give us four of these. And it messed up our oxygen, too, you know, because we stuck that two in front of water, and water has oxygen in there. All right. On the CO2, we've got two oxygens. How many oxygens do we have on the two waters? Two. So what's two plus two? Four. All right. So come back over here. Now we can finally balance our oxygen out. All right. That's super easy. Skadoosh. All right, now that we have a balanced reaction, now we can read what the problem says. If I burn methane gas and produce 5.89 moles of carbon dioxide at STP, all right, 5.89, and this is moles of carbon dioxide at CO2 at STP, that's nice to know because it is a gas, how many moles of methane did I burn? So we're going from moles of CO2 to moles of methane, CH4. All right, so hey, we're sitting on moles. Nice. What do I do? Mole to mole ratio, that's right, because mole to mole ratios are the hardest stoichiometry. Cross cancel CO2 with how much CO2? Look at your balanced reaction. One mole of CO2, all right? And then come over to your methane. How many moles of methane? Is there anything in front of there? No, oh, so it's like one. Shoot, that was easy, right? Isn't it just 5.89 moles of CH4? That was easy. All right, but the question does continue. Careful. There's a second part of this question. How many grams of methane gas did I burn? Okay, well, we know how many moles of methane we got. So how can we switch this problem to make it solve for grams? Yeah, molar mass. So what you can do is actually just, you know, continue the problem, or you can, like, start a new problem. So two different ways of doing this. I don't care which way you choose. But you do realize that if you just took this one step further, that you would end on mass, that you could end on mass. So I'm going to just take this one step further. I'm going to take the, you see how moles of CO2 is gone? I'm going to take these moles of CH4, and I'm going to convert it to mass. And we do molar mass to do that. Let's see, so carbon is 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So this should be 16.0 grams. See how I'm cross-canceling moles of CH4 to get my grams. All right, some calculator work here. Okay, I got on the calculator 94.24. Can you guys confirm that? Nice, thank you. Um, probably three stick fix, so one, two, three doesn't look like we need a round, so this is 94.2 grams of CH4. We're burned. Woohoo! All right, 
question number one? Done. Question number two. In the following reaction, and this is what it looks like, Al2O3, producing some aluminum and some oxygen. Okay. Is that balanced, by the way? <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. Well, you're not doing anything. You're not going to even touch this problem until you balance this. Okay. You have to balance your stuff first. All right. Um, I don't know if you guys see this, but I see it because I'm used to seeing these kind of reactions. I've got three oxygens on the left and only two oxygens on the right. You have odd on the left, even on the right. That's never a good thing. So what's a common multiplier for three and two? Six. All right, so let's get six oxygens on the left. What should I put in the front to get six? A two. And how about six on the right? What do you think I'm going to do? A three. All right, now careful. How many aluminums did you uh, just make over here? There's four, so I've got to have four over here. There. Now that you have a balanced reaction, proceed. The question says... How many moles of aluminum, so they want to know how many moles of this, how many moles of aluminum would be produced from 20 moles of alum Al2O3? So 20 moles of this. So it looks like they want us to go from 20 moles of that to moles of aluminum. Look good? Just kind of know what the question says, what it gives you, what it's asking for because seeing a clear path is going to help you out a lot. All right, start with what they give you. They give you 20 moles of Al2O3. Skadoosh. All right, what's the mole-mole ratio there? 2 to 4, but uh, where do we put the 2? Where do we put the 4? To answer that question, just look at what needs to be crossed off. You have to cross off Al2O3. So what am I going to stick down here first? Al2O3, that's right, two of them, because the coefficient is two in front of that. So two mole, Al2O3 is going to four mole of your aluminum. All right, some people like to reduce the four to two to say two to one. I don't care. Um, I don't even bother with reducing. It's just as more effort. All right, so if the number's on the top, you multiply it. So I'm going to say 20 times four, and then divide it by two. Did you guys get 40? Nice. 40 moles of aluminum, final answer. Question number two. Make sure we answered it all the way. Done. Any questions on that? You good? Sweet. All right, question number three coming at you. Okay. How many grams of O2 are required to produce 346 grams of zinc oxide in the following reaction? And here's what it looks like. 2 zinc plus O2 gives me 2 ZNO. First of all, is it balanced? Nice. Okay, then we'll look at the problem then. All right. Again, it says, how many grams of O2, so they want to know about this dude right here, how many grams are produced when 346 grams of zinc oxide, so they're giving you this guy, 346 grams of this. All right, so there's our question. Looks like we're going from zinc oxide to oxygen. You see how I always like write over right on top of my balanced reaction? I think it's a really good strategy. All right, start with what they gave you. They gave you 346 grams of zinc oxide. Oh boy, we're going from grams to grams, so I know it's going to be one of the longer stoichiometry problems, okay? All right, you got grams. Is that allowed? Is, what do you think we need? What's the heart and soul of stoichiometry? Mole mole ratio. So this mass thing is kind of standing in our way. So let's convert that to moles. All right. So finding the uh, molar mass of zinc, uh, 65.4. Make sure you're rounding that correctly. And oxygen. Okay, I got 81.4 grams. Where am I going to stick 81.4 grams? On the bottom. Good job. And what does that equal to? What is molar mass? How many moles should I put on the top? Good, it's one mole. Molar mass is always the, mol the mass of one mole. So even if, like you see in the balanced reaction, you see how there's a two in front of the zinc? That is for the next part, the mole-mole ratio, right? We start looking at coefficients. Don't use coefficients in your molar mass. That's a trap. Okay, you should remember way back when we learned about moles, 
That molar mass is the mass of one mole, okay? All right, so now that we have converted our mass to moles, you can do the heart of your stoichiometry problem, which is the mole-mole ratio. All right, what's the ratio between zinc oxide and oxygen? One to two, two to one, okay? It depends on how you want to say it. We have to cross-cancel the zinc oxide, so how much zinc oxide am I going to stick down here? Two. Oh, careful. There's a two in front of there. So two moles. Z-N-O. All right, what am I going to stick on the top? What am I going to? One mole of O2. There you go. Just make sure you're setting that up because cross-canceling, right? Always follow your stuff. All right, they want us to get to grams of oxygen. So O2, that is the formula. Don't think that I'm talking about oxygen atoms. I'm talking about oxygen molecules. So what's the molar mass of O2? 32.0. So each mole, cross-cancel moles, right? Each mole of O2 weighs 32.0 grams. Just make sure you cross-cancel, okay? All right, if it's on the bottom, you divide. If it's on the top, you multiply. So I'm going to take the 346 and divide it by 81.4, divide by 2, and times it by 32. I've got the calculator says 68.009. It keeps going. Um, sig figs, how many sig figs do you want to see in your final answer? Three. Do mole ratios count for uh, sig figs? No. Does the value of one mole count for sig figs? No, because it's exact. Those are exact values, okay? So three sig figs. One, two, three. Do you need to round that last value? No. So it's 68.0 grams, final answer. Making sense, everyone? Very good. All right. Let's see, that was number three. So let's check out number four. That's a strange question. It says, what is the correct mole ratio of blah, 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 blah. And it gives you a reaction. I think I mistyped that. You guys want me to make a quick correction on that? Real quick. So first of all, obviously, the reaction is not balanced. And this is what it looks like. I'll show you. MgNO3, 2. And you got K3PO4 reacting to make Mg3PO4, 2, and some KNO3. All right, first things first, why don't we go ahead and balance this, and then how about the question is edited, edited, edited. Let's edit the question to say, what is the mole ratio between K3PO4 and KNO3? All right, we'll edit that question. Can you guys mark that on your paper or otherwise just write it down? Sorry about that, little typo. Okay, can't answer it without a balanced reaction. I don't think it's balanced. Doesn't look balanced to me. How about you? Can you tell now? Getting better at that? All right, check it out. Um, one magnesium over here. Here's your magnesium. How many magnesiums you got over there? Three. Oh no, oh no. Come over here, give me three magnesiums by sticking a three in the front. Looking good. All right, with this three in the front, can you tell me how many nitrates you have? Because this nitrate's got a two in the back and then a three in the front. How many you got total? That's a six, that's six nitrates total. Um, all right, let's find our nitrate. Here's our nitrate on the right-hand side. How do I get six of those bad boys? Put a six in the front, good job. That's gonna give me six potassiums, you see the K? Gives me six Ks. Find your K on the left. How do I get six over here? Stick a two. All right. Um, if I put that two there, don't forget about your phosphates. How many phosphates you got now? You got two. But then on the right, a you already got two. That's very nice. Very nice. All right. So let's answer the question. What's the mole ratio between K3PO4 and KNO3? Now, guys, the reason why this is an important question to me is because on your exam, they ask. The almost basically the same exact question, and you have to do it in the right order. All right, so let's talk about order. What they what I'm talking about is, um, all right, so let's look at the K3PO4. Here's your K3PO4, and here's your KNO3. I could say the following, okay, and you're going to tell me which one's right. Two to six, six to two. Which one do you think is right? 
the first one because of the way the problem is written. You will put the K3PO4 first and the KNO3 in there second. Now, I just want to make sure you also know, um, I don't think the test does this, but I'm just kind of checking anyway. Um, would it be okay to go one to three? Technically, that's totally true. But what if they ask you to balance the reaction first and give the correct balanced mole ratio? If they ask you for the balanced mole ratio, could you please stick to this guy just for safety? Sound good? All right, cool, cool. All right, you guys, um, I think what I'm going to do is allow you guys a little bit of time to work solo to build some confidence, and then I will come back and give you guys a few of the answers, okay? So just work a little bit solo. I think that's a really important process, all right? Peace.